Um, so this session, uh, I'm just going to be covering the art of Power BI. So I like to sort of make my reports look quite artistic, shall we say. Um, and so when designing or developing reports, you know, I always sort of try and go that extra step just to make sure that it is a cut above above the rest. Um, now, you, you sort of get a lot of reports that have got your, your normal visuals, your normal sort of layouts, etc. But, you know, the, the you, know, you need to try and sort of sometimes just push that boundary. Um, and that, that's, that's what we're going to sort of go through uh, today and, and, and look at that process of how you take a standard simple report, um, you know, that someone's trying to develop and then revamp that into something that's quite quite artistic um, and, and sort of showcase uh, report. OK, uh, let's do the slideshow. Uh, I don't like uh, presentations, uh, so this is not the best presentation, but uh, it's got a few uh, few details on here uh, that we'll just uh, go through. OK. Um, so who am I? Uh, so Sheb. My name is Sheb Rahman. Um, I'm a founder of Sovereign BI Data Analytics Limited. Um, started about two years ago uh, running this company and we just focus on, on sort of BI training uh, and in sort of enabling companies and, and users to, to get started with Power BI and then and then push forward and, and embed that uh, and adopt that within their sort of organisation. Um, I have a few certifications. Um, I've taught at some events. Um, I've worked for a few consultancies uh, in the UK. Um, I've been around uh, for the last sort of 11 years, 11, 12 years working in BI. Uh, and if you recognise some of the, the images there from Performance Point and the early versions of SSRS, uh, you know, we started, started at that point uh, back in those days. Um, I have a YouTube channel, uh, which is sort of at the top there, which is a, got quite a few videos. Uh, I'll be adding quite a few in the coming weeks as well with with us all being at home um, and a bit more time to, to do those sorts of things. Um, and I also co-organize uh, the Manchester Power BI user groups and the Leeds uh, Power BI user groups as well, uh, which have now gone virtual uh, as well since we've uh, since we've been on lockdown. Uh, Sovereign BI, just a quick uh, quick overview of what, the, what we do here. So we sort of report, do report design and development uh, and we focus on sort of BI training and, and BI workshops. And these are just a sort of subset of the, the sort of training sessions we cover. So we do an introduction to Power BI. Uh, we do a sort of bespoke advanced analytics. Uh, we do what the DAX is that, just a sort of pure DAX related uh, training session. Uh, we do a train the trainer session. So focus on uh, training your own users to then, so then go on and train uh, their own sort of uh, cohort. Uh, front end training, because yes, we can do the back end training, but we've got so many features on the front end now that <laughs> users to get users really do get lost when 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 you give them a Power BI report. You say, "Here you go, here's Power BI. Go and go and play with it." And they've got your right click features, you've got your drill throughs, you've got your analyze functions and features, you've got your ask a question, and so we we provide that training for for users as well to be able to get the most out of out of the reports as well. Uh, data modeling for Power BI, you know, we've had a couple of talks today again uh, already on data modeling for Power BI, but again, it is quite important, um, uh, very important, I'd say, uh, you know, to make sure that the model is right for your for your Power BI report. It is, you know, the foundation of, of the report and, um, you know, 70 to 80 percent of the time should be spent, uh, you know, uh, making sure that data model and that foundation is is, is good and proper because we, we do need to think about that. It's the user that needs the experience. It's not it's not being developed for us. It's being developed for the user. I mean, to make sure that the user experience, you know, is clean, is is good, is easy, is efficient and, and performs well. Um, so that's key. And then again, uh, I think uh, uh, another speaker spoke about the Power BI admin, so we, we do cover uh, a bit of that, making sure that you do uh, release and promote your reports within the organisation efficiently. OK, so reports as art. So what is art? Uh, so art, uh, I wanted to just put this in here. So the art is the expression or application of a human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form. So for me, it's a, it's a Power BI report, right? <laughs> so, you know, I put my skill, I put my imagination within a report. Um, and then visually present that to users, to, to management and whoever it might be, whether it's at a, 
at a, a, an event uh, or so on. Um, but the other key thing is to make sure that that the, the data and the visuals are, are relevant to to what's being um, to what's being shown. Um, so just some some key practices, I guess. You know, this is not a, a sort of distinct, you know, exhaustive list of of, of things um, that you have to do, but just some things to sort of keep in mind. Uh, and and there's a lot there's a lot more than this as well. So making sure you know that you use the right visuals for for the data. You know, a lot of the time, and I'll show you the example that we've got here as well. Um, is that people use you know the custom visuals that, that that we've mentioned already. You know, because it's a nice it's a nice sort of custom visual. It looks good but they're using the wrong data for, for that visual. So even though it looks nice, it looks pretty, it, it's not actually sh showing anything useful. Uh, the other thing is that layout and flow. So making sure that the report flows properly, you know, having a dis dis disparate report, you know, is, is not, uh, it won't be sort of um, taken well by, by users as well. So making sure you've got a good layout and flow is, is key as well. Branding is also important. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the times I see, reports where there's, there's multiple colors there's numerous colors all over the place and you know it's not branded to the business and and when you sort of show that to to your management to your ceos and your sort of high level um you know employees you know it it, it doesn't really sort of fit with their uh, with their business so making sure that it's branded well is, is another key thing uh, making sure it's uh, um you know accepted uh, labels headers introductions you know making sure people know what they're looking at, um, you know, what's on the report, making sure there's sort of introductions and information there for them to, you know, make sure that they don't have to ask the question, well, what am I looking at here? You know, what what does this mean? What is that? You know, you need to make sure that they don't ask those questions and come to you. It needs to be there already. Uh, so symmetry and alignment, <clears throat> excuse me. It's always nice to sort of have things aligned up and, and you know, things that are symmetrical always makes things look a, a bit more prettier. Uh, storytelling uh, comes under sort of layout and flow as well uh, a little bit because you, you have to make sure that the, the question, the, the report that you're designing or developing uh, does answer, you know, the question uh, that's being asked in the first place. OK, um, there's some mics uh, that just need to be muted, if you don't mind. Uh, if anyone's got a mic muted, please uh, mute yourself. Um, and then there's there's others as well. So there's a, there's a lot more that we can um, we can put into you know design and, and create nice sort of art arty sort of reports. Um, but this is just a, a few things that you should sort of keep in mind. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to set the scene here. Um, so this is an actual report that um, was brought to me by a company, so a fire service within the UK. Now, they started using Power BI within their sort of small uh, little team. Uh, you know, they downloaded it, they'd seen it somewhere. Um, they just started playing around, importing some, some data from their SQL, SharePoint, and Excel short sources uh, that they had and started to put things together. And, and that visual on the screen that you can see there is the sort of thing that they sort of put together. Um, you know, they've got basic knowledge of, of Power BI, uh, but they, had, they did see the sort of potential of it and what they wanted to do is is get something sort of developed and created so that they could then push it that up out to the organization and, and get some um you know input from the business um so their requirements was first thing was to to sell it to the business so making sure that their management you know see these reports and think wow yeah we need these and you know a few years ago when first Papi i first came out there was the you know, cross highlighting and, and cross filtering, which which got people hooked. But nowadays it needs to be a bit more. It needs to be a bit more than that. So the first thing was first was was to make sure that the, the company and the business, you know, invested in Power BI and said, yes, this is a tool that we want to use. Uh, they also wanted to improve the processes so their own individual processes within the organizations and departments. They wanted to improve those. They wanted to increase their performance of their staff, their departments, etc. Uh, with it being a fire service, they wanted to make sure that the you know all those sort of KPIs etc. are all 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 hit and targeted and kept an eye on. Uh, showcase Power BI and its capabilities. You know the, the 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 art of Power BI, what it can do. You know what what sort of thing we can you know achieve from it. Um, highlight KPIs and key performance uh, indicators, uh, and essentially bring their sort of data uh, to the fore. Okay. So they were the sort of sort of few set of requirements, and they they, they completely said, look, 
you know this is this is greenfield you know you do what you want and you know that, that that's great for me give me a blank canvas and you know i i like to go away and, and put my sort of spin on it okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this report uh and i'm going to take you through the process of what i did to then turn it into something uh a bit more uh, artistic okay so i'm going to jump over to power bi uh if you can just give me uh just a thumbs up to make sure everything's okay. You can hear me okay. Screens and everything is is okay. Uh, if you haven't got your mic muted, can you please uh, mute your mic? Okay. So. As I mentioned, this was the sort of report um, that the guys uh, developed in their um, in their sort of small team. Uh, they pulled in data from different sources, um, and as you can see, it's it's just a, a bunch of visuals put on a page. Uh, you know, they've they've thrown some KPIs in there that they've they, they've just put in the middle. Um, they've tried to create some some trends by the looks of it at the bottom down here with some some dates. Um, you know they've got uh, some some they've got some filters at the top on the left and on the right as well. Um, a few visuals in the in the middle here. Tree 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 maps are they? Um, not really found a, a great use for tree maps, but but there you go. Uh, and then we've got the good old pie chart in the middle there. So the, you know they, they've sort of brought the, the the report in. They've started to cross highlight and filter and and get things going. And and that's as far as they they could go. OK, so I took this report and I said, right, OK, let's let's uh, make something of it. Uh, uh, just to advise that I'm going to uh, run through this report using bookmarks. So I've also, I don't know if you guys have used bookmarks much, um, but I've created sort of a, a bookmarks just to take this uh, uh, report from, from beginning to, to end. OK, so we're on our existing report at the moment, which is this one. And then they also had a, a detailed view of the report as well. Um, so they sort of drill through from one place to another, came through to the more detailed page, which then gives them a list of all their sort of risk statuses and, and, and so on and so forth. OK. Um, now, what this page is trying to show <laughs> is it's not uh, it's not great. So it is a fire service. So the fire service ca uh, carry out home safety checks. Um, so it, is the screen meant to be changing? Because at the moment, um, the presentation is just from Start Power BI. Were you just explaining the report? Oh, right. Is is the is there not Power BI on the screen? No. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me just reshare. OK, can everyone see that now? Awesome. Yeah. Brilliant. OK, so what this report was was trying to show was was home safety checks carried out by the local fire service. So the fire service, um, they go out to check a particular property. Um, so when they check that property, they come back and they say, Right, okay, well, that property is either high risk, it's low risk, it's no risk, uh, and then they log that. Uh, they need to log that and they need to make contact with someone within, uh, you know, a certain amount of days. Then they need to carry out that within a certain amount of days and they have KPIs, et cetera, uh, around that, which is uh, they wanted to sort of check the performance of their sort of staff when, when that's happening. Then they wanted to see how often things, things were coming through, um, you know, what sort of, safety checks were revisited as well because essentially if something's deemed high risk we want to go back out and, and revisit it okay so this was a detailed report okay now the first thing i do when i got the report i give everything sort of a traffic light so i said right okay well what's good what's bad um so the greens are the sort of okay bits and pieces um so we've got a nice data table i always like a, a data table um and then I've got to be given a green to that, <laughs> to the little infographic that we've got at the top there. But other than that, you know, you can see the sort of reds I've given to 
you know, this filter over here, which is sort of away from the other filters over there, really, we should have it sort of in, in one sort of area. Um, we've got these visuals here that don't really be, doesn't really suit the, the type of data that it's trying to show. Uh, we've got uh, a sort of visual over here without a title. Uh, we've got no figures, we don't know exactly what that is here. Um, a pie chart, yeah, is good for, for showing that data, but again, we haven't got, um, you know, we, we probably could do with a, a better visual, uh, you know, showing that sort of data there. Um, again, this is okay here, uh, an, an amber traffic light. I think they're trying to show the trend, uh, but again, uh, you know, there, there could be a better visual that we can use for that. Uh, and again, they've tried to do the same sort of down here by incorporating some of the other uh, statuses that we have here. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, I did the same thing with the um, with the detail page going through uh, line graphs. I think they completely use the wrong graph here. Uh, line graphs generally used for trends and analysis and, and, and sort of dates, uh, date analysis time functions. Um, but this uh, is using the wrong data for that particular visual. Uh, and again, some blank spaces, uh, disparate sort of filters and slices uh, on the page. Um, so, you know, there's a lot to sort of clean up and there's a lot to sort of, uh, you know, do on this page. So I had to sort of uh, make sure that I knew what was to what, what was to be sort of changed here. Okay. So the first thing I sort of did is obviously start with my uh, blast, uh, blank canvas. OK, now uh, one of the speakers uh, said something earlier on about having uh, you know a space to to click and having a background uh, etc which it which is great and and you know i agree with that which is the reason that i've put given myself a sort of uh, a canvas here so i've given myself a, a rectangular sort of canvas here just so that i can place all my sort of visuals uh on that on that sort of uh, canvas there and i've got my sort of space around the outside for any sort of clicking uh, and and getting out of any visuals okay so the next thing I did was to add uh, a layout. OK, now knowing what visuals I had in place, I sort of knew the sort of layout. But again, this comes back from this comes from my sort of experience with performance point. And if we go back into 2000 and, oof, eight, 2007, 2008, when performance point was 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 the big thing. And, you know, there was a drill through and where everything was born, you were forced to sort of pick a layout. Of, of sort of columns and rows and and that's almost sort of stuck with me um i guess coming through uh to, to power bi and you can you can sort of see the the rows and the, the sort of columns that i've done there um so you know making sure that you've got a, a nice sort of template or a layout um you know helps you sort of design that report you know quite well Okay, so then you just sort of go through and label it. Say, okay, well, I'm going to put a chart here. I'm going to put a sort of introduction over here. I'm going to have a little space uh, for my KPIs here, some more charts, and then another KPI, uh, you know, down there as well. So just give yourself a, a representation uh, of where you're going to uh, sort of put this sort of stuff. So to begin with, let's put in a couple of charts and a couple of titles. Okay, so now these are the contact breakdown. So these are the number of home safety checks that were carried out. Now these need to be carried out within seven days. So we can see that the majority of them are sort of carried out within seven days, but then there's a few that sort of, uh, you know, filter out and take a bit longer. Similarly with the completion, we need to be completed within 28 days. So we can see that a number of them are completing within 28 days, but then there's some that sort of filter out and, and jump over the, the other side. Okay, now if we go back to the existing report that we had, this is what this was showing here. So we can see that the big squares and the, the tree map was trying to show that data. Now we can see that that was completely using the wrong type of visual. Uh, you know, we couldn't see where bottlenecks were. We didn't see where things are sort of overflowing here. It doesn't really give us a, a, a good representation, but when we go back here, we can see exactly where, where that data is and where our um, sort of information lies. Yeah, so we, we, we're bringing that sort of information to the fore. Um, and making sure we've got a good uh, representation of the data. So the next is to to add the KPIs. Now they had their KPIs sort of split out all over the place, and and Power BI does have a few KPI um, sort of visuals. But you know what's to say we can't create our own sort of KPI little uh, you know tabs. So what I've done is basically put a little card visual on there and created my own sort of 
uh, title here with each one. So a number of her safety checks completed, I think you've written it a number. Uh, same with the 85% uh, contact made within seven days and complete within 28 days, we've got 80% there. So that graph that we saw on the left hand side, right, let's go back to the existing. So the graph that we saw over here on the left hand side, which we didn't know what it, <laughs> what it was, it was a sort of risk status API. So we've got this down here. So it was just a breakdown of, of the risk statuses. So all the sort of states, the, uh, the checks that were carried out by uh, the fire service, uh, they came back and this is where uh, you know, they're sort of broken down into, and that's that's simply you know what it was, but we, we didn't know that in the existing report, but but now we do. Okay, so they were trying to also do trends as well. Now we know Power BI, we've got our drill down and the drill through functions here, so we can start at the top level, you know, uh, with a date hierarchy and then drill down to month and quarter and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that gives us a, a view of overall, um, and sort of equates to what they were trying to sort of, uh, you know, achieve with their uh, sort of matrix view that they had uh, going along along the tab. Okay. Now, Scattergraph uh, uh, is, is, is I, I really like Scattergraphs personally. Um, you know, when you've got a number of different uh, KPIs, you've got a number of different measures, uh, you know, scatter graphs really help bring those together, especially when you've got a number of different dimensions. Uh, and it really sort of, you know, brings out data that you really can't see, you know, to the, to the sort of naked eye. Uh, and when you do sort of bring those together, you can uh, spot trends, analysis, and even use the sort of grouping uh, function that Power BI has that, that places it into sort of clusters um, as well, uh, which is really quite, quite good. Um, so I thought that was quite, uh, quite key for this for this sort of uh, report and, and would sort of work well here, uh, which it did. Okay, so we've got a bit of space at the top there. So first of all, I thought, you know, let's add a, a bit of um, description in uh, home safety check referrals, analysing patterns of home safety checks following a referral request. Okay, and now the only one of the only other things that I liked on the other report was uh, one of the infographics and that apparently was something to do with their with their own personal departments, so I thought I'd include that back in, uh, back into into the report for them, um, so they sort of custom <laughs> a little bit to them as well. Okay, so I've gone through that process now. So I've sort of picked up all the sort of different visuals that they had from their graph. So we've got our breakdowns here, we've got our statuses, we've got our trends analysis uh, breakdown, etc. Uh, we've got their infographic, uh, and we've put it all. Uh, you know, into a different sort of layout, yeah, a different sort of view. Now, once we've got to that stage and we've got everything, uh, you know, filled in, uh, the next thing to do is just to remove that frame now. Okay. So I'll just take give you a second just to sort of take that in because it, it it does make you know a big difference when you do take that in and just look at that. It 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 almost is uh, you know a really nice sort of view uh, of the data there. OK, but we're not we're not sort of finished there. So this is just the, the start of it. We're going to we're going to sort of uh, take this uh, a few a few steps further. OK, so the first thing is we're going to add a background. Now you'll see that's quite, you know, abstract, quite minimal. Uh, and it's important when you do add backgrounds and, and other things to to reports, uh, you know, is to keep it, keep it minimal. You don't want to overpower the report you don't want to take the focus away from the report you want to just give it that extra dimension uh, you know um, without taking that sort of uh, focus away because I've seen I've seen some reports I've got really nice pictures of beaches and really nice pictures of cars and other bits and pieces in the background and I end up sort of looking at those cars thinking oh, I wish I had that Ferrari and I wish I, and then forget about the actual data uh, that's on uh, that's on the report itself so so yes add pictures on add other things on but just make sure that it's not taking you know over the the whole report and the focus remains on the information and on the data and on the questions that you want to sort of ask as well so the next step is I added some infographics. So infographics uh, is something that I'm I, I do like. I think you know having infographics, having numbers, having names, having data, 
you need to you need your sort of brain to be able to build up that picture and and having infographics and uh, pictures there just help you relate and and help your brain sort of relate exactly what's going on there and and, and you know if you've got uh, a marketing department that have uh, you know the sort of all the templates and, and and all the graphics for your own company and all your brands you can use them within the report and then instantly your users will then relate to that you know image thinking yep i've seen that on my source system that that's what that is um so you're just building a picture for the user and and, and again you've got to remember that you are you are developing these and and for for the user um essentially so you need to be you need it to be user friendly and you need it to be um uh, you know uh, easy to recognize okay so adding these infographics you know just give you a, a just to bring that bring that together a little bit So then add a sort of little grid here. So you can see that I've just added these little sort of grids around here that just sort of break up the, the data um, and the visuals. So if you think of it of like, a, I guess, an open plan office, um, you know, if you've got an open plan office, you know, you've got hundreds of chairs everywhere, departments all sort of merged into one another. Um, and then we've just put these little barriers just between each of these, um, you know, departments just to break that up. So there's still that sort of openness there and you can still sort of weave in and out of each of these departments you know and go and see other other people in other departments but there's still that sort of openness and that flow and that that airy feel about um uh, about it i don't know if i'm talking about uh sort of office design or reports now but uh, again with the reports you know we've got our sort of visuals here and you know we've got enough space for them but you know we, we want to just sort of cordon them off just to give them up the, their own sort of space as well just just to show that they are separate to to some of the others as well so that just helps uh you know uh, give that a little again another added dimension as well um so i mentioned earlier on about these sort of horizontal and vertical um sort of options and, and axes that you have now not everything on the report has to you know, align. Um, you know, that's the main thing. As long as there are a couple of things, a few things that, that do align and you can align them, it does make a big difference. Now, now making sure so you can see sort of aligned a few things there at the top. I've aligned the sort of titles and the graphs down here. Uh, I've vertically aligned, you know, some of the uh, values there as well. But other than that, everything's sort of quite, uh, you know, freely uh, roaming, roaming quite freely. Um, so just having some sort of, uh, you know, uh, vertical sort of um, uh, sort of alignment there uh, does make a big difference. Okay, then the last thing that I wanted to to add to this was a bit of a flow. Okay, so when when users go into a report, sometimes they just you know, again, they're lost, they, they, they don't know where to start, they don't know where to go, they don't know what to look at first. But essentially, you know, you, you, you give them a bit of direction, you know, almost like sort of signs on a on a road, you know, turn left here, don't turn left here, et cetera, et cetera. So here we're just giving them a sort of bit of a bit of a flow, a bit of guidance to say, OK, well, this flows into here, this moves into here, you know, just to give the user experience, you know, just to give, make it a, a little bit easier, uh, you know, for them to, to navigate that report so they can see that that 85% contact was broken down and shown from here. The home safety checks, etc., was was done there. These statuses down at the bottom, they filter down and, and, and broken down into the same colours. So you can see that they all the colours all, are also sort of, uh, you know, matched up as well. So making sure that things are relating to one another as well. Um, and again, just gives that user that extra uh, extra dimension in their mind, but in their brain to be able to sort of relate the the colours to the colours and the the flows and the images and, and, and the values and, and put that all together to make a, a really nice sort of picture, you know, in the in the user's mind. OK. So the other thing that I added, because I did have a few pages uh, of reports, is that I added um, uh, just a, a few a navigation menu there. OK, and now this is a simple sort of buttons that you can create in Power BI uh, with with, again, bookmarks that you can sort of change as well. So you can also do things like this. So you can show that we're currently on the home page. Uh, then safety detail. We can change values and say, say press me, don't press me, go go away. <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> um, essentially, there, there's there's the options to to do that as well. Okay. 
Now this is the detail report. So again, we had a, a, a view of the, the detail report before um, and essentially it should be a breakdown of, of, of the previous page, which we wanted to sort of do here. But again, you can see um, the sort of same sort of uh, application was, was done here. So break it down into columns, uh, relevant areas, and then just place your visuals in there, remove the frame, and you should be should be left with, with something uh, that, that sort of looks like that. Okay, so we get back to the home page. Now from the home page, there's something that I forgot to put in there. So, um, you know, uh, we, we go back to the original report. We've got all our visuals in there. We all have got the bits and pieces in there. Uh, we covered mo most of the aspects in there, uh, but there are a few things that we forgot to put in. So there's the, uh, the slices here and there, which uh, unfortunately uh, I didn't leave any uh, space for. Um, so what we had to do is sort of add a just a show show hide filters button again. This was just using uh, bookmarks and using the sort of uh, uh, layer capabilities in, in Power BI and the show hide uh, functions. Uh, and all we do is sort of click on the button, show our sort of filters, uh, filters necessary, you know, whatever we need to do, uh, and then close that back up again. And then again, that's the sort of showcase feature, just something to 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 sell that to the business. You know, once once the, the business saw that, uh, they, you know, uh, as you are with a Power BI report, you know, you don't expect that uh, within a Power BI report. You don't expect a navigation menu uh, within a Power BI report. You know, you don't expect flow. You don't expect, you know, infographics. So so breaking that expectation and exceeding that expectation is is you know is key. Um, and again, it's, it's a sort of art form, so it's a, it's, it's a visual representation, you know, of, of you know artistic flair, you know, just just playing free with 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 whatever you you know have available to you. Um, now I know uh, a couple of the guys said before, you know, don't use, you know, uh, don't let people download visuals, don't let them do this, you know, I, yeah, to a degree I agree, um, but you know I also think that yes, download those. Um, you know, visuals, you know, make try and make them work, but just make sure that you use the right data, uh, you know, for that visual um, and, and and represent yourself and, you know, express yourself, you know, on these reports, uh, you know, there's there's no other way that people are going to see your your work uh, unless you sort of put it onto a page and and, and, and show it to somebody. OK, um, so that was that. Um, then we wanted to sort of take it. Obviously, we can, we can do other things like, uh, you know, other tool to reports uh, to, to here as well. So have those filter and other bits and pieces and just just extend, you know, again, I mentioned expectations. So again, extending that expectation and the art of the possible. So what can we do with this, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so again, there's, there's other bits and pieces and, and you know, Power BI and, and Microsoft, they're, they're continually obviously add into this and, and create more and more uh, features and functions, which is sometimes, uh, you know, hard to keep on top of. But, you know, trying to incorporate some of these and, and you know, giving people ideas of what they can do, uh, you know, is always is always good. OK. So uh, so that's the end of that. So you could have taken that report and, and, and published it and, and made it that uh, into, into something like this. Now, another key thing that came out here was that this uh, KPI value here. Now, um, this is the percentage of properties uh, that were revisited. Um, now, if you think of uh, uh, a property that was deemed high risk, so the, the fire safety check, uh, you know, come out to your property and say, oh, wow, actually, this is really high risk. Um, you know, uh, we need to go and log this. So they used to go back, log it. Um, but this data here shows that only well, less than a percent of those were revisited. Um, you know, um, so as soon as they saw this this figure, um, you know, they went back to their um, they went back to their systems and, and and tried to find out exactly what was going on because apparently that wasn't you know the case and that they did they did revisit all these uh, you know properties. Um, and what they found out was that you know people were logging things incorrectly and and setting the wrong. Uh, you know, value when they came back into into the systems after these uh, after these visits. Um, so again, something that they you know instantly sort of made a change to their sort of processes. You know, internally fix that, uh, and were able to sort of move forward and make sure that uh, you know people were logging things correctly and things are coming coming through. Because essentially, this is all sort of then reported to 
you know, the HMRC and, and, and other sort of uh, authorities as well. So they needed to make sure that was uh, that was up and working properly. Um, so what I'm going to show you, I'm just going to go over to here. So this is another report that I sort of developed again. Um, you can sort of see similar sort of layout and you can sort of see the similar sort of template that I've used here. So, um, you know, I've created a, a couple of columns, this time going vertically across and then sort of split it out um, uh, horizontally there, uh, starting with sort of simple graphs and simple visuals. And, and again, you know, I haven't I haven't done anything that, um, you know, used any sort of custom visuals here. I'm just using sort of simple sort of visuals um, that put them together in a way where you know, they look quite, quite good. You know, they flow well. You know, we've got a number of unemployed by province. Uh, then over here, we've got the average hours people, uh, you know, drive to work. And apparently in Canada, the big thing is for, for overtime. So, so I wanted to see, well, OK, how much overtime people were doing, how much, uh, you know, they were doing paid overtime, unpaid overtime, and then break that down by, by family type. So is it is it sort of single people that, that were doing overtime ma mainly or was it married people you know separated divorced you know who was it that was doing it overtime and were they doing it paid and unpaid you know and then you know people take a lot of time off so average weeks off people were, were quite high as well and again what i've done is brought that together so i wanted to see well okay you know people take do a lot of overtime people a lot of people are off sick you know let's let's bring that sort of data together and does that show us anything you know do people tend to work harder than take more time off sick? You know, um, who knows? But this is the sort of thing that I wanted to sort of bring out from from these reports as well. Uh, and just having that flow as well, you can see flowing from from one area to another, making sure people know what relates to to, to other things in, in the report as well. Okay. So another one that I can show you uh, it was quite uh, good, which is our HR showcase as well. So again, I went through a phase of, of, of creating and, and sort of using a lot of infographics. And this is sort of a human resource sort of uh, report that was developed for a, a consultancy. Uh, now it was focusing on their sort of, um, sort of uh, ethnicity and diversity, uh, you know, areas and sort of section of their um, of their business and they wanted to see you know we've got a lot of people coming in and coming going um so here we've got like a breakdown of, of, of employees by ethnicity so who do we employ uh you know a rolling 12 months of, of people you know starting the business and leaving in the business we've got a sickness rate up here um and then down here we've got you know employees with active year by by years of service so who you know how often do they stay you know how long do they stay before they start filtering out is there a reason for that you know are they promised things when they first start their their job and then then not followed through do they have not have many benefits etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's a lot of questions and answers that, that come from report um, reports like this when when you give the, the information in in this sort of way uh, and again if we go into our sickness detail as well again this gives us a view of you know, just focuses in on that sickness, you know, so how many days do the people have off sick? What is the average? Uh, you know, who is it? You know, is it a certain ethnicity that do it? We can see over here on the left hand side that, you know, April seems to be the, the most number of days off. But then if you look at the average, the average sort of spikes up in, in sort of December. So whether that's, you know, due to Christmas and, and other bits, people getting cold, etc. Um, you don't know. Um, and again, uh, a breakdown of sort of location to see whether it's a certain area where people are sort of. Oh, that's actually really relevant now. Actually, I was, I was talking, you always used to use the example of a pandemic, but now <laughs> with us being in one, you know, that, there you go. Um, but yeah, so, so that's sort of breakdown uh, of that. But then we can do something totally, totally different as well. Um, and I do like uh, a lot of football, so you might have noticed a lot of football. But I did uh, a report for, for Juventus Football Club. Uh, now, this was uh, a breakdown of their review of the season, well, before we, we sort of uh, stopped playing football. Um, but again, you know, we've got sort of visuals in there, we've got pictures in there, we've got information, we've got data. And it's, it's, not, it's not a report where you just sort of look at and, and look away. You need to sort of take your time and, and look at, what the actual data is showing. So, you know, you focus on the, the home stats, 
um, you know, how often do both teams score when, when Juventus play at home compared to, to when they play away? Um, you know, how many wins do they have at home? How many average goals do they score at home compared to, to those that they score away? Uh, and we've even got a shots conversion as well, so they can see we've got 239 shots, you know, per game, uh, you know, 154 shots here, uh, 38% on target, 33% on target, and then the conversion rate of that as well. Um, you know, how many goals under three and a half goals? So over one and a half goals, 76% of the time, um, but away, you know, it's 82% of the time, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and this was their sort of forecast, uh, you know, for this for this year where we expected them to be in the in the sort of coming months um, towards the end of the season. Um, and again, you can see the sort of background image that we've got there. It's there, but it's not taking over the report. You know, you, you can sort of see it. And you, whether you've noticed the the the, the kits in the back of this, um, these two visuals here, you can see you've got the away kit in the background there, and we've got the home kit uh, in the background here as well. So again, that's it's there, it's it's visual, but it doesn't take over the the report. It doesn't take over over the the data. Okay, so number of ways we can sort of represent ourselves. We can use artistic flair within these reports, uh, and you can see I'm still using the key things. Uh, you know, there's things like symmetry I mentioned, so keeping things symmetrical uh, along, keeping things aligned, you know, breaking things up with, with little uh, lines and grid lines uh, across. So, so, you know, keeping these, uh, you know, key, uh, you know, rules uh, in your mind when, when creating reports, you know, really, really do uh, help. OK, I'm just going to switch back to uh my presentation okay so yeah so that was the the the, the conversion we moved we, we converted a, a report to to something that was quite quite artistic and quite um, and different and did just to let you know they did take on our services and we did go on to 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 then uh, you know in uh, create a, a power bi report server for them etc cetera, etc cetera, and went on to do some some work. So this was interesting as well. Um, so going uh, and just doing a search on on uh, you know news uh, in uh, online. So fall in vital fire safety checks. Uh, watchdog finds. Um, excuse me. I found I found that <laughs> uh, the number of home safety checks falls as fire crews battle budget cuts. You need to embed with people not taking a vital safety checks. Uh, austerity brings worrying drop in home fire safety checks in the northeast. 37 Worcester City premises fail fire safety checks. Uh, I think one thing that we do know is that they probably won't get a, a recheck only <laughs> based on our data. Okay, so another example. So this was the uh, old version of the um, uh, HR report that I showed you. Um, so this was quite a vertical report. It, it, it sort of scrolled up and down and that was sort of changed into into that sort of visual so we can see how I took the same sort of visuals from there and just visually represent it to in a different way with a different flow with a different layout uh, and just put some sort of flair in, into that as well and again we talked about sort of having pictures in the background you know again we can do something like this you know we can have a picture in the background but where I've, in this case I've made this sort of canvas for the report you know opaque so we can't see through that and it's not taking our you know, focus away from the report, well, but we do know it's it's designed and it's and it's branded to our, our company as well. So that's the way we can sort of, um, you know, bring pictures and use pictures in there uh, without it sort of taking over the, the, the whole report itself. Now, a, whole, a redesign or, or, or redesign a report doesn't have to be, you know, massive. Uh, you can see on the top left, this report here, um, it's just got you know, all these uh, KPIs and, and headers just amalgamating into one, whereas down here, all that's been done is that we've just split those up and just give them more own, own little area. We've, we talked about giving visual space and giving, you know, each visual their own area and just giving them their own area, you know, really helps, you know, quite a lot. Um, and the other th th the key thing is when um, you do uh, create these reports or, or redesign these reports. The users that are creating the reports, they always know um, what data to use, but some but don't know, you know, which which visual to use. Um, 
So generally when redesigning the data that's needed for the reports is already on the page. In the example for this one, the data that they needed was already there, uh, but it was just just needed slightly updating and splitting out a tiny little bit. So this was the, the, the Canadian one that I showed you just before. And, you know, th this is a company that approached me, uh, you know, from from Canada and said, look, we've got some data we need, you know, to win this contract. We need, a, a, you know, a Power BI guy to, to revamp this report and create this for us. So I went ahead and, and did this for them and and they they, they loved it. Um, you know, one of their comments was that it had, you know, a really good analytical uh, flow, which which I've always uh, thought that was a, a good way to to describe that. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Well, I can hear the applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Too kind. Thank you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's enough now. Come on. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, let me open up the uh, chat window to see if there's any questions. Uh, do, 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 do. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Really nice. Thank you. Lines, you place the line, something else. Okay, let's see if we can go back up. Uh, those light grids just simply lines you added manually added those visual borders. Um, so the light grid lines were, you know, the, the shapes that you can get in the Power BI. So the shape uh, options that you get in the top of your Power BI report, um, that was uh, what's what's on there. Um, so you just create a, um, a simple um, rectangle and just using those. How was the show filters hide? Filters button. So that's using a, a sort of mixture of the bookmarks and um, the there's a, a visual panes filter as well. Um, so there is a video uh, that I've done online. I can send a link uh, after that on on how that's done. Uh, but essentially, you create a bookmark, uh, you hide the visuals, um, you create another bookmark, and you show the visuals, and then you create a button just to flip between one and the other. Oh, you adding the numbering? Um, the numbering, I'm, I'm assuming you mean sort of the the KPIs. So they are just the card visuals that you can that you can get on there. Uh, online data stories gallery. Uh, they're not available on the data stories gallery, but they are on my website, and a lot of them are there to use, um, and and open to use as well. So you, you can go on there, uh, sovereignbi.co.uk, and there's. A lot of tam sample reports that you can you can use on there, including my sort of football analysis and, and other bits and pieces. Do you have a good source for library dashboard templates and also for infographic icons? So infographic icons, uh, you know, Google is your friend. You know, uh, you, you you can get a lot if you just search, you know, icons and then the name of whatever you're sort of looking for. Just make sure that you're allowed to sort of use them and they're open to 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 use. But essentially. You know, I pick a lot of them from from certain uh, libraries there, uh, and also uh, when you're with a company, when you 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 work with an organisation, I mentioned that uh, the marketing generally have you know their own infographics and their own visuals that you can use uh, within reports as well. Uh, please share a link video about how to flip between bookmarks. Yes, I will grab that and I will share that with you. Okay. Uh, any questions anymore? Uh, thank you, everyone that's joined. Uh, appreciate your comments. Um, I will uh, make these links available. I'll send them uh, a 